Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about the five biggest mistakes which people make uh, when set up a school which results in their school closing down. If you want to open a school and are wondering the what are the five biggest mistakes and you want to avoid those mistakes, then watch this video till the end. So what are the five biggest mistakes and why? how can I tell you? My name is Amol Arora, I'm the Managing Director of Shemrock and Shemfer Group of Schools. We are a chain of 650 preschools, primary schools and 10 plus 2 schools spread across India, Nepal and Bangladesh. So what are the five mistakes, critical mistakes that school entrepreneurs make and which you should avoid? First is, they don't have any experience but they depend on a principal. So when the first thought they think is I'll invest in a school and I'll hire a principal. The biggest mistake that people make is this, they think they'll hire a principal and she will run the show for them. See if you ask any entrepreneur, nobody help earns you money. When you're an entrepreneur, you have to know how to run the show yourself. So what happens is today that you hire a principal and if the school doesn't do well, it doesn't do well. If it does do well, what is going to happen, let me tell you. In a year or so, people around you will start doing the mathematics. Okay, this much investment, this much money. And the first thing they will think just the same way you thought, let me hire a good principal. So they will offer your principal 5,000, 10,000 rupees and he or she will leave and move on to the new school. And your whole school system collapses now because now you have to look for a new person and a new person will always come with their own systems and own approaches. And that is why if you notice the branded schools do very, very well. And for that matter, any branded product does well. When you go into McDonald's, you don't ask who is the manager, right? You just go for the systems. So if you have a system with you, if you have a system which works independent of people, your school will be successful. And that is why we have been successful for over 30 years. 4 lakh children have aside from our schools because it has been a systems approach. People come for to us for the Shamrock and Shamford brand name, not because of a particular principle. The second mistake which people make is they think cheap and best. Cheap and best. It's a common phrase that we always hear. I'm looking for cheap and best. There is nothing called cheap and best. Cheap can never be the best. Can you find, is the best car the cheapest? Is the best shoe the cheapest? Never, never it happens. But yet when we start as entrepreneurs, we think I want to sp spend less money, but I want for cheap and best. It is never possible. If you want the best, you have to pay a little more. But the smartness is not think cheap and best, but think value for money. That's what a good businessman does not think. What is it costing me? They think in profit terms. See, an, an inexperienced person, what he thinks is this is too expensive, this is more expensive, this is cheaper. But an entrepreneur, a good entrepreneur thinks this might be cheaper, but how much is the net profit? How much value am I getting from it? If something is more expensive, but the value is much, much more, then you should, the, a good entrepreneur always invest in that little more because the profit, the net gain is much more. Ultimately, in any, any transaction, the, prop, the thing that you have to look for is net gain and not go for cheapest. And the same thing parents also think. No parent wants cheap and best. If it was cheap and best, then they would have gone to a government school. If they're just looking for the cheapest possible education, why are they coming to your school? They, they know there's a government school option which is free and their children will get food as well. So parents are looking for value for money. So value for money is a much more uh, better thought process to think of rather than cheap, as, cheap and best. Similar, just like again, I'll come to the same example of a franchise. There are franchises where you get it for free. There were franchises which were giving their franchise for free of cost. Yes, no charges. But as soon as Corona hit, they just disappeared. Now the poor franchises, they built a brand and the brand belongs to somebody else who has disappeared. Now do they drop the brand and start afresh? Or do they keep working with whatever they've been working for the last two, three years? And these are the people who are looking for cheap and best. And those who realize that they need good quality, they want a good brand and they wanted management like us, leadership like Amol Aroda, are those franchises are the happy ones because they are still running their schools. Maybe not, not all the fees is coming, but whatever fee is coming, they are happy that with that fee they are able to survive. Third mistake that people make is either they overpay teachers or they underpay teachers. What happens is if you underpay a teacher, you, you can do that. That means you are paying that teacher less than her capability. Whatever the teacher deserves, you are paying her less because she was needy. She was needy at that point of time. And you also knew in your heart that you should have paid her more. Her level is much better than this, but you got a really good deal. But what, what's going to happen is the minute somebody offers her 
the money based on her talent based on her up her approach what she truly deserves she will leave you right because now she's getting what she actually deserves so when she leaves you there will be staff turnover and because of staff turnover your school will not do well because parents will feel the teachers have are leaving the school so it sends a very wrong message instead if you had paid her what she really deserved she would have still been with you and the other problem is that people overpay teachers sometimes uh, they make a mistake in recruitment they are they are impressed with something which which is maybe because during the interview people put up a face a fake facade just like when somebody goes for marriage the girl and the boy are the best behavior when they see each other right in arranged marriage but the real story is always different so if you overpay somebody a it will impact your finances because at some point you realize you are not getting a return for this person's investment the second thing it will it will uh, discourage the people who other teachers in the school because they realize that this teacher maybe is not as good as we are yet she is being paid more it demotivates them to a level where a lot of people just leave and if you ask people why did they leave they just say that somebody else was being paid much more for doing with less talent and it was frustrating for me to see it every day and so even though everything was perfect for that person you were giving them a good salary she had a life, good working environment but because you were doing this with somebody else that person got frustrated and people leave because of that that's a very surprising thing so that again i'll give the same example of a franchise in a franchise we help you with the right recruitment we help you with pay scales what what is needs to be paid all those things are taken care of so that the teacher turnover is less and also because it's a franchise it's a brand teachers don't want to leave the brand as well because they get so much training the weekly training they get the lesson plans activities they get a name behind themselves if they get transferred between different cities uh, they'll give it they'll be given preferential in recruitment in, in whatever branch that we have over there and with that brand attached to them their marriage value improves they get more money and tuition so we are able to attract for the same budget we are able to attract much better quality staff and that's why the schools do well uh, the fourth point the fourth mistake that school entrepreneurs make is the wrong location a lot of times people make uh, which means either they are paying too much rent they are, they get fascinated with the place and don't realize the reali realities of a school because they're coming from outside the sector so that's where again i use the same example of a franchise works very well because a franchise will always say no people have come to me with locations where i have instantly said no because i know the rentals are so high that for 2 years this person won't put on a single rupee what's the point of that and you'll end up bleeding so much money when in rents on the other hand somebody goes for such a cheap location which is so down market that nobody wants to send their children to that area that's also a mistake sometimes areas are location are chosen and they have a river next to them they have a industrial area they have a retired house so there are many many so retired population so there are many reasons why the location makes such a huge impact and the wrong location is trying to go into a car race where your car your car only has second gear so if your location is wrong no matter how hard you try what quality you give you can have the best of teachers but if the location just cannot will not work it means it will not work so please get good advice in fire do your research very well again and if it's the same idea the french a good franchisor will always tell you the good and the bad things and tell you this is the right location and what fee you can expect to to charge fifth problem is unclear positioning people don't understand the concept of branding when i say branding people think of advertisement as branding that if i advertise that means i'm branding no advertisement is just a small part of branding if i tell you the word apple computers it brings to you an image that image is brand what image do people think of when they think of your school that's very important and every touch point the parent has whether whether they come as an inquiry they come as a parent they visit your website they go to your social media they talk about other parents with your about your school it should have similar values the values should be consistent the image should be consistent you should stand for something otherwise most schools in my opinion are just a hodgepodge they hire they make a building they they uh, hire a principal whichever they feel it can speak good english and value for money or cheap and best or whatever philosophy they have they hire some teachers and they expect everyone to do the job and if you noticed and i have studied in 12 schools so i know this with experience i've studied in asia in europe uh and of course in india and uh, in us and it's the same story every class every section teachers are different 
because there is no consistency schools don't understand branding whereas if you go to a mcdonald's here or in hong kong or in in, uh, in uh, melbourne or in los angeles you will experience the same french fries the french fries will taste the same even though potatoes the cooks are different everything is different because they are consistent they understand the brand and potato that those chips are a part of the brand it means that when you go to mcdonald's you order the food the french fries comes to you very quickly with the same taste what if every city was different what if you go to a different city the color was blue what if the of mcdonald's it would be inconsistent it will confuse you right yet when it comes to running a school people don't have any clue of that and the reason is because most schools there was a shortage of good schools you open a school you teach children can speak english parents would rush to the school but now it's getting more and more challenging it's very very important to have a brand and that's why again having a brand taking a franchise makes a lot of sense and that's why i've seen it over the years see on one hand you start your own school uh, which is you're not clear what you stand for what are the pain points because you're an outsider to the sector so imagine you a parent comes and say why should i choose your school and you say oh we are just new we just started off a school and uh, we are hoping to do this and you come up with some philosophy based you have a brochure which a designer made you had a content writer write a content and again somebody made the website which is totally inconsistent whereas somebody takes our franchise and suddenly somebody comes for admission and say uh, why should we choose you suddenly you have facts like we are now somebody takes our franchise with one agreement with just one agreement they can say very confidently we are a part of a chain of 650 schools we have 30 years of experience 4 lakh children have studied from our schools we are supported by chota beam india's number one cartoon character we are opening two schools every week we won the limca book of records for opening maximum schools in the shortest possible time we received 17 national awards in 2019 so the list goes on and imagine for a parent how much confidence he has in this we've been trained by the head office our trainers will be coming we have weekly teacher training for for all us for all our teachers or we have list lesson plans you if you get transferred between any two cities next day your child can go to a shamrock or a shamford branch so imagine this all this with just one agreement because the positioning is very very clear our positioning is that we have to create schools where children enjoy coming to our schools so in every touch point the parent has it's about being joyful being that they, they see that joy in, in the school so if you're setting up a school have a clear positioning and having a franchise makes total sense for that so i i hope i've i've been clear on the five biggest mistakes number one having no experience and depending on a principal second is mistake is thinking cheap and best third is either overpaying or underpaying your staff fourth is the wrong location and the fifth is unclear positioning so if you take care of these things the chances of your school doing well will be much much higher if you have any more questions i hope i have answered these questions people ask me what are the biggest mistakes i have given the five biggest mistakes entrepreneurs make when they set up a school if you have any more question please ask in the chat box uh, in the comment box i'll try and answer them to the best of my ability i'm also doing a webinar on how to open a successful school post corona if you have not attended that please register yourself fill up the form and somebody will get in touch with you and uh, help you uh, with all the details uh also if you think this was useful i've given you some value please do like this or videos so that i know that uh, so i can be encouraged to create more such videos and do subscribe by clicking on the link on the side and click on the bell icon so that whenever i post a new video you're the first to be informed with that i wish you all the best in your plans to open a successful school good luck